Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bhartia, and once again, welcome to our series on predictions for 2022. And today we have with us, once again, John Murtick, director of the Open Mainframe Project. John, uh, I will ask you to grab your crystal ball and talk about the predictions that you have for 2022. But before that, please quickly give us a, a kind of an overview of what is this project all about? Yeah, so the Open Mainframe Project is uh, the focal point for open source on the mainframe, whether that would be Linux on the mainframe, um, ZOS, or really any other technologies. And, and this is a project that um, has helped bring together that community has launched um, over 20 working groups and projects um, in six years and made significant impacts um, to the mainframe ecosystem overall. Please uh, grab your crystal ball and tell us what predictions you have for 2022. So I've got three predictions. The first prediction is people are going to be proud to have a mainframe again. And, you know, you this is a, a fun challenge when I'm talking with users of mainframe and I'm talking with vendors. They're all saying, like, you know, mainframes are a cornerstone of our society. Like, they're not just a technology that's important. They're not a technology that's prevalent. They're a technology that if it did not exist, our society would cease to function. Planes fall out of the sky, financial, you know, in ruins, yada, yada, yada. And so many of the organizations that have invested in mainframe, they, they, they've always you know, been nervous to talk about it. And, and you don't even see many of them um, oftentimes talking publicly about the deep investments they have. And one prediction I have is that we're going to start to see that change. Um, now that we're seeing these, many of these organizations take open source as a central part of their strategy, there you're going to see those uh, organizations coming together. You're going to see uh, the enterprises start to see mainframe as sort of a key part of what they're doing. But more importantly, they're going to be excited to say, we have a mainframe, um, and this is what it's doing for us. Um, and so that's something to stay tuned for what the project um, has in store this year. Another thing is with COBOL. And the, you know, COBOL is the hot thing, um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, I suppose. But what I'm predicting here is we're going to see big increases in investments in, in COBOL. Um, our COBOL working group did a study earlier this year, and they found um, in the last 20 years that the lines of COBOL have grown significantly um, in that time frame. And this is for a technology that, you know, if you believe what the street tells you, uh, people are throwing away their COBOL applications. They're not doing any development in anymore. Well, that's actually not true. There's a lot of not just maintenance application development, new investment happening. And you know, I'm predicting we're going to see this increase, but also the tooling around it to help support modern COBOL development continue to be invested in. Um, so this is a, you know, a really forward thinking technology. And the third big, you know, prediction I have, which I guess, I don't know, maybe it's not as great as a prediction, but um, we're going to see a lot of investments in skills and around the mainframe. And you know, this is something the mainframe community has always sort of known is, you know, bringing that next generation is, is so crucially important to taking this technology forward decades and decades to come. Where I think we're going to start seeing this year is the skills investment start to happen to go with it. So, you know, trainings around many of these technologies, many of these universities starting to reinvest and bring back in mainframe curriculum or technologies that impact the mainframe. And a huge investment in this area as, you know, we're going to, again, start to see, if you look at the first prediction, we're going to see people proud to have a mainframe. We're going to see people start investing more in it, and they need the skills to complement it. And I think we're going to see people looking at mainframe, you know, tooling and application certifications um, increasingly this year to the point where this is actually going to be a really big hiring class, um, you know, for vendors to start pulling for it. Thanks for sharing those predictions. Now, if I ask you, what is going to be the focus for the project for 2022? So we have a, two really big focuses on here. One is with our projects, we're going to continue to work on the downstream success of them. Um, we saw two of our projects graduate this year, Geneva ARS and COBOL programming course. And what we want to continue to do is see more of those projects, um, our, you know, our group of 20 plus projects graduate. But we also want to see downstream ecosystems further be built from our projects. So, you know, we're looking in the Zoe project where we're hoping to see more training and more formal um, tooling and 
um, you know, enablement material starting to be built. So that way, companies that are looking at Zoe as a way to connect their mainframe back to the enterprise have, you know, solid training and solid tools to build off of. So that's one big piece um, that I'm really, really starting to anticipate there that we're going to be seeing a lot of investment in. Um, and I think the second one is, you know, we're going to really be focusing on that next generation and that next group of mainframers really coming through. Um, one is, is on our mentorship of helping, you know, pair together and, and bring new blood in, but also focusing on a diversity aspect and helping highlight the diversity that's already happening in the mainframe ecosystem. But at the same time, you know, giving, um, you know, a space for those that are coming from diverse backgrounds um, to find their way within the mainframe world and, and build a successful career in it. So those are two big things that I'm, I'm sensing we're going to be doing this year. John, thank you for taking time out today and share these predictions with us. And I would love to have you back again on the show, of course, next year as well, to check how many of these predictions turn out to be true and to get an insight of predictions for the next year. Thank you. Thank you.